Alright, now for the next weapon category. It's gonna be a very short one. I'm just gonna get out of the way here and now because it's very similar to the handguns. It's the handheld projectile weapons. And there are three of them total, really, but I'm gonna cover two of them for now. The first one is the nail gun, a relatively powerful electric tool. So, the nail gun is one of the only weapons that is exclusive to Outbreak File 1. You will not see this in Outbreak File 2. It's also exclusive to only one scenario with an Outbreak File 1. And that is the very first scenario, the Outbreak scenario. Now its main use is to nail some boards down on a door frame to slow down zombies from getting to you. It's really to trigger a cutscene and to add to the event checklist. But you can use it as a regular weapon. So let's test it out real quick. Alright, so it fires exactly like a handgun, and you can even do the pot shot maneuver with it as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and quickly test the nail gun on a zombie. Alright, so eight nails from the nail gun to take down a zombie. So yeah, it's a pretty good weapon for a projectile weapon. It's just as powerful as the handgun GL, it seems. So yeah, if you don't want to use it for barricading the zombies, you could use it as a temporary weapon. It does seem to help a lot. Alright, that is it for the nail gun. Alright, now for the other project -o weapon that I'll be reviewing. The capsule shooter. This weapon's description changes depending on the kind of capsule you got loaded into it. So this weapon is exclusive to George in Outbreak File 2 only. It is his extra item. This is a weapon you could actually use on your teammates rather than the enemies of the game. Because what it does really, it gives you the ability to use the effects of the capsules on your teammates without having to give them the whole capsule first. You could just shoot them with the capsule and it will automatically do the effect. So for example, if you have recovery capsules like it already does right now, then if a teammate is in caution or whatever, fire a capsule at them and they will be in fine status. Same with the antidote, if they're poisoned, shoot it at them, they will be fine. Same with the hemostat and antivirus. So, like I said, you normally use it on teammates, however, there are two capsules that you could load into it that are actually effective on enemies. And that's specifically the antidote capsule and the antivirus capsule. So. You can use this weapon with other characters since it's the extra item, you just need to have George on your team to get it from him. But since it's mainly for George, I'm just going to test it with him, I'm not going to test it with a female because it's used just like a handgun. So it's not worth showing the extra animation. So let's test it out real quick and get those blue recovery capsules out of the way. Alright, so just like I said, it fires just like a handgun. Now, what's funny is, when you're using it in battle, you won't auto-aim on the enemies. You'll actually auto-aim on your teammates if there are any around. If there's none around, then you just aim wherever you're facing. There's no way to auto-aim on enemies with the capsule shooter. So, I'm gonna go ahead and test both the antidote and the antivirus capsule, just to show you the difference. Alright, so I literally had eight capsules in that thing, and it did not take down a zombie. So yeah, that's why I call bullshit when the damage chart claims it does 500 damage. Unless he's talking about a different enemy, otherwise it's completely false, and all it does is make them shudder. So it's a funny thing to do, but not effective. Alright, so now try the antivirus. It only takes one antivirus capsule to take down a zombie. This weapon can be very effective if you use antivirus capsules. It's one of those weapons that you want to kind of save in case there's like a mob of zombies or something. Alright, well that is it for the capsule shooter as well as the projectile weapons. There's another one called an ample shooter, but that's going to be the final weapon I cover in this whole weapon review. Specifically because it's a boss only weapon. So yeah, that is it for the projectile weapons for now.
Alright, new category, the automatics. And there are only two in the Outbreak games, and both of them are in both games. So the first one is the Submachine Gun, an automatic handgun for special forces. Alrighty then, let's test it out. So, I'm pretty sure the submachine gun is based off one of the Heckler & Koch weapons in the main Resident Evil series. Most likely the MP5. Now, since the machine gun uses standard handgun bullets, then I'm just gonna go ahead and test it on a zombie. Alright, so that submachine gun was giving me a lot of trouble for this weapon reveal. And I tested it on multiple zombies, even though Kevin and Yoko were interfering like mad. But I know there were a couple of zombies there that were clean slated, and it took between seven and nine hits of the submachine gun. And that's kind of typical because it uses regular handgun rounds. So seven to nine bullets from the submachine gun, the advantage with the submachine gun is, has like 30 bullets to start with, it uses regular handgun ammo, which there's a lot of in these games, and it's an automatic machine gun, so you get the shots off very fast. But just like the burst handgun, you'll eat through ammo probably very fast with it. Alrighty, that is it for the submachine gun. Alright, now for the other automatic weapon. The Assault Rifle. A gun suited for rapid firing. It uses 5.56 caliber rounds. Alrighty. I bet this is based off the M4A1 Assault Rifle from Resident Evil 3. Let's test it out. So this is one of the only weapons that does not feature individual bullets for the weapon. You can only reload it via magazine. Alright, now, I know so far in this review I haven't tested any other enemy except a zombie, but they're really just the best enemy to test a lot of the weapons on, and this isn't an enemy review. So you really have no valid argument against that as long as it doesn't take just one shot. I won't test the magnums on a zombie, I guarantee that, because I know those will take one shot. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and test the assault rifle on a zombie. Alright, so it only took six shots from the assault rifle to take down a zombie. And that was possibly a far range. So, probably will take even less shots if you're a little closer. I made the mistake of not making sure I was in medium range on that one. But hey, it still only took six shots, so it's way better than any weapon that uses handgun bullets, that's for sure. I recommend the assault rifle, however, probably not on zombies, but any higher class enemy, the assault rifle is a perfect weapon for. It's okay to use on boss battles, although I'd make sure to have a backup weapon or at least two assault rifle magazines if I were to attempt that. <laughs> I don't know. The damage rates between the games for the Assault Rifle are very dramatically different. In Outbreak 1, the Assault Rifle only does 130 damage. But in Outbreak File 2, it does 200 damage. They up the damage big time for the Assault Rifle. Just to let you know, the guy only lists the d difference in damage rates when it comes to range for Outbreak File 2. He does not do it for Outbreak 1, so... I don't know if in Outbreak 1 he only listed the close range because when it comes to the weapons that have the same damage rates between weapons, it's usually the same as the close range. So I'm assuming that's what it means. So Outbreak 1, 130. Outbreak 2, 200. Huge difference. Alright, that is it for the assault rifle as well as all automatic weapons. Alright, now for another category. The shotguns! And just like the previous category, there are only two. However, they are not both featured in both games. Outbreak 1 only has one shotgun, and I'm gonna start with that one. 
So the regular shotgun. A gun which can scatter bullets over a large area. That's basically the definition of any shotgun. This one is obviously the Spaz 12, and that is based off of the Code Veronica shotgun. Alright, let's test it out. then. I'm gonna go ahead and test the shotguns on zombies as well, but instead of medium range, I'm gonna go close range on this one because shotguns are supposed to be close range weapons. If it takes like a very small amount of shots, then I'll go ahead and test the medium range as well to make it a fair test. Alright, so only two shots from the shotgun to take down a zombie at close range. I was kind of fearing that it would only take one shot. But I guess not, at least in normal mode anyway. The zombies are just strong enough to handle one shot, even at close range. Now the thing about shotguns is you may think that, just like the classic games, the best thing to do when using them on zombies is to aim upwards when they get close. That does not apply here, since there is no decapitation in this game. Just like freaking Code Veronica. Killjoy. Since that's not the case anymore, it's kind of pointless to do that. And you just saw right there, it made him fly back anyway. Alright. I guess I could go ahead and test a medium range as well. Alright, so at a medium range, it took three shots. So yeah, shotgun's a pretty decent weapon. To me, it could be used as an all-around weapon. It could be used for zombies, zombie dogs, up to hunters and lickers, and maybe even used for bosses. Although, you might want to be careful if you try to do a boss, because close-range weapon and getting close to a boss, not always this is the best idea. The shotgun does have a damage difference between Outbreak 1 and Outbreak 2. In Outbreak 1, it only does 600 damage, while in Outbreak 2, it does 700 damage. Alright, that is it for the regular shotgun. Alright, now for the other shotgun. The Shotgun E. An easy to handle shotgun. It uses 12 gauge rounds. Alright, by the looks of it, it's probably modeled after the original shotgun from Resident Evil 1. The Remington 870, I believe it is. Let's test it out. Aha. Alright, Mark totally looks like an overprotective father with that shotgun. Alrighty then, let's test the shotgun E on a zombie at close range. Alright, so no real surprise there. Usually shotguns, if there's more than one on a game, the damage is gonna be hardly different when you test it on a standard enemy like that. Cause yeah, it took the same amount of shots as the regular shotgun. However, the damage charts say that there is a damage difference between these two shotguns. There has to be, they're two different shotguns. The shotgun E apparently is a tad weaker than the regular shotgun. Cause the regular shotgun had 700 damage in Outbreak 2, while this one has only 600 damage. Alright. Well, that is it for the Shotgun E, as well as all shotguns.